technique called calorimetry. Calorimetry comes from two words, calorie and metry. Metry means to measure, calorie means heat. Calorimetry is to measure heat. You cannot measure heat directly. You always have to get the temperature change, the mass, and the specific heat capacity. We use this equation, the energy transfer equation, the Q equation, um, and we use water in the calorimeter. Now, what if we use something other than water? Okay, let's say we had a Cheeto. Let's say we had a Cheeto that produced 500 calories. And let's say the mass of the liquid sample we had was 50 milliliters, or 50 grams, I'm sorry. And let's say we did this experiment with vegetable oil instead of water. Instead of putting water in, we put vegetable oil in. Okay. The question is, I can't see this. So for water, we know the value for water is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. For vegetable oil, the value is lower. Which one would increase temperature more with the same Cheeto burning underneath it? Would the water or the oil? Oil would because it has a lower what? Specific heat capacity. What if you did this with metal instead of water? Metal would heat up faster. It'd be harder to measure the temperature of the metal, but it would heat up faster. So there are ways you can design a calorimeter that takes advantage of these factors. Now, let's say you have this data. Let's process this data to find out what this group would get. This is an example. So we start with 1.21 grams of cheese puff. We end with 0.15 grams of cheese puff. What's one thing we can calculate? How much of the cheese puff burned? So 1.21 so we take 1.21 grams minus 0 0.15 grams. This is the mass initial minus the mass final. That gives us the mass that burned. So 1.25, I mean 1.21 minus 0.15 equals 1.06. 1.06 grams. Now, from the other data, you got the initial temperature and the final temperature. How do you find the change in temperature? Subtract the two. Which one do you put first? Final temperature minus the initial temperature. And that equals 28.5 minus 19.5. 28.5 minus 19.5. That equals 9 degrees. So that's our delta T. Our volume of water is 100 milliliters. How do we convert that to mass? It's going to equal 100 grams. Okay, you got 100 milliliters. Okay, we know that one milliliter equals one gram. We can set up a proportion. 100 milliliters is going to equal 100 grams for its mass. Now, what equation do we use to find the heat transferred to the water? A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, O, P, Q. Q equals the mass times the change in temperature times the specific heat capacity. The mass of the water was 100 grams. Change in temperature was 9 degrees Celsius. Specific heat capacity of water is still what? One. Still 1. And we multiply this together, we get a value of 900 calories of heat produced by this sample of Cheeto. Now, how do we compare it to the previous data? We have to get calories per gram. So to get calories per gram, we take the 900 calories and divide it by what? The grams, 1.06 grams of the what burned. So 900 divided by the 1.06, and this gives us a value equal to the 849 calories per gram. So this particular group would get a measurement value 
of 849 calories per gram, which was higher than the other value we looked at, right? Okay. Could your data be different than other groups? Absolutely. Could you have different sources of air? Absolutely. Okay. So your value, if it's really, really low, that probably means you add more sources of air. You may not know if it's low until after you do the experiment. Okay. So to see how much energy is transferred in the calorimetry experiment, we need to look at the amount of energy transferred. It depends on the identity and mass of the substance. The specific heat capacity of water allows us to convert temperature changes into energy measurements, and the water is very helpful at doing that. It's also easy to get. It doesn't cost a lot of money. You can pour it down the sink. You can use it, reuse it, use it, reuse it. Now, to check in, I would like you to solve this problem here for a peanut. How many calories are in each gram of peanut if the following data is collected? Let's look at this. Uh, raise your hand if you can tell me what you think for a peanut. How many calories per gram in a peanut? What do we get for calories per gram for Mr. Peanut? Still working on it. You think it's a thousand? All right, one thousand calories per gram. All right. So here we've got fifty milliliters of water is heated up. So that's 50 grams. Multiply that by one times the change in temperature, which is 10. All right? 50 times 10 is 500 calories. Then we take the 500 calories and divide it by our peanut mass. 500 divided by 0.5. And it looks good to me if we can add it up. And if you got an answer equal to 1,000 calories per gram, that looks exactly right. Now, what would they have on the container for a peanut for the calories per gram? One calorie per gram if they had that on there. So if you look on peanuts at home, if, that's, if all of this data was correct for a peanut, it might match the uh, peanut container. Now, one of the other things you may have noticed is 
Remember this number you got. Okay? Remember, we calculated from the bag that sh this should be 5.71. So it's supposed to be 5.71 calories per gram. How many chemistry calories is 5.71 kilocalories? 5,700. So if you take the amount of calories, you subtract the value you got it from it, 849, you divide it from the actual value, and then multiply 100, this will be what's called your percent error. 5710 minus 849 equals, divided by 5710. This group here happened to have an 85% error. Okay? Now, that means that you could improve your experiment quite a bit, which is okay. We know that we lost some heat, so you should not get 0% error. Okay, definitely, it should be at least 50% error because lots of heat is lost. All right, uh, tomorrow. What thing's going to be different tomorrow for the test? Tomorrow for the test, you'll have the individual section one and two test and the FRQ. Then you will have a group test where you'll work in a group of four people. You may not share information with other groups, but you may work with four people of your choice on the test. The way the questions will work is you'll have a multiple choice question and you'll have to answer it for number one, two, and three. So if you think the answer is A, you put A, A, A. If you think the answer is B, you put B, B, B. If your group members disagree, you can put A, B, C. Only one answer will be correct. Either A, B, C, or D. So you can get partial credit if you disagree with your group members. So it's going to be a little bit different tomorrow. Tuesday after break so that you don't forget about it.